Oh my God. Thank you so, so much for that beautiful song. And you're all tuned in to the African Women's Voices Show on ETV Ghana, the show that tackles with issues pertaining to women as we contribute to national development. Well, you see the song we played right now? Well, we played it because this is a special Mother's Day edition. We all know that uh, Mother's Day is coming soon. This coming Sunday is Mother's Day and ETV Ghana through the African Women's Voices show is showcased in so many ways we are going to be celebrating our mothers. They could be single mothers, they could be widows, you know, they could be our regular mothers or some people who have played mother roles in our lives. And we've got some videos from some of us already and messages already sharing and celebrating their mothers even ahead of the Sunday. And we are going to be playing that for you. We also have another smart and intelligent woman in the studio today who will be tackling with issues around being a mother and being a career woman as well. So today's lineup is really an interesting one and you do not want to miss a bit of it. So just stay right there and just enjoy the rest of our show. Well, how am I looking? Good? I'm looking good. I can attest to that as well. And I want to say a very big thank you to Buterax Clothing. She's the one who has made me look like this and she has really made me so, you know, so proud of how I look right now. And I want to say, look on the screen, you're going to be seeing her phone number there. Give her a call and let her give you that very beautiful outfit that you're going to use to launch your survival after the COVID-19. Because we are all looking towards the time when we are going to say COVID-19 is out of Ghana, is out of the world, so we need to celebrate. So just get that fabric of yours to her and she's going to make you look really good. All right. Um, Baltic also says we should stay hydrated even in these times of COVID-19. So do not say water, say Baltic. Wherever you go, just make sure you're moving along with your partner that is Baltic. Baltic is ensuring that we are bringing African women's voices to you right where you are. So do stay tuned as we're going to continue with our interesting lineup for you. I will be right back. Thanks for joining us. This is the African Women's Voices Show on ETV. If you just joined us, you haven't missed much. Before we went on the break, I mentioned that we've received some messages and videos already about people wanting to celebrate their mothers ahead of the special day on Sunday. We're going to be playing some of those videos for you right after now. But taking the lead is my own version and my own celebration of my mom. She has been very, very, very wonderful and awesome to myself and my siblings and even to my dad. And I really want to say Happy Mother's Day to her in advance. She is Mrs. Emilia Dede Kweku. I was named after her. I'm so proud of her. And you can check out the resemblance. You see, we look alike. Yes. Thank you so much, Mommy, for all you've done for us, for all the love, the sacrifices, the care. We appreciate it all. And we are praying that God will give us so much resources to keep making you smile. Happy Mother's Day in advance from me and all of my siblings. Thank you so much. God bless you. All right. So we're going to be playing the next videos. Hello, my name is Andrea Kote. Um, I wish my mom a happy Mother's Day, long life and good health. You're an amazing mom and on behalf of my siblings, we really appreciate you and salute you for everything you have been doing for us all these years. I wish um, my second mom, Auntie Kate, I wish her a happy Mother's Day. I love her so much as well. And I wish Mama Dora too a happy Mother's Day. You're all amazing women and may God be with you. Opportunity to wish my mom a happy Mother's Day. I pray for God's blessings and then favor from God. May she live longer uh, to experience and then witness the good work that she has done bringing me up. Happy Mother's Day, mom. Affectionately known as Auntie Christy or Mama Loya. 
I'm so grateful to her and I thank God for her life and for all the sacrifices she's made for my brother and I and also for my entire family. Happy Mother's Day to all the frontline workers who are also working hard to help us win this war against COVID-19. Indeed, mothers are lovely and they make so much sacrifices just to make us smile and to get us to be where we are. Most of us have had to go through mothers and we want to say whatever it is that you've done, we are praying that God would replace in multiples and in multiple folds for you. You are going to enjoy the fruits of your labor. Okay, that's what we can take for now with the videos. We're going to continue the rest of them as the program you know, continues. But right now we are getting into the discussion of the day. And I mentioned earlier that we're going to be talking to another smart and intelligent woman. And she's an architect and a mother as well. So she's going to be telling us how she's balancing being a mother and a career woman at the same time. I'm going to let her introduce herself to you and uh, over to you. <laughs> How do well, I, feel? I, I feel like my mom should be in the seat. Oh. Because I, I mean, celebrating mothers mm -hmm. and you ch decide to choose me I f I'm a novice okay Aww. I am a novice my mom should have been in the seat not me <laughs> but anyway, but anyway now. Yes, I'm and here. you're a mother so of two already I am I am <laughs> so I am and and for some reason two it's not easy honestly having two kids some have five ten whatever but two even the two it's not an easy job especially with pregnancy um when you have to go through all that all that you know pregnancy for some people is not easy mm -hmm. that's true for me i didn't have it easy very at easy all. during that time i wish i could just give up on every other thing in this life and just concentrate on have kids have kids and then move on with my life but the good but, news is that today... The good, yes, the good news is that, I mean, you find strength. Sometimes, during that moment, it feels like, okay, let me give up. But strangely, God has a way of giving us the strength to always carry on. Mm -hmm. Yes, so my name is Gloria. Yes. I'm an architect. Okay. And um, for, an an, uh, for an architect, all you do is um, you design houses. You also assist in making sure that whatever you design is exactly what uh, has been built. Okay, so nice. that's basically what I do. Awesome. So before we get to that um, design of the house aspect, most of the people who are celebrating their mothers right now, we're mm -hmm. talking about how, and even you even started it as well, you know, about giving birth and, you know, being a child and having to go through, you know, um, your life. What would you say your childhood was like? <laughs> I'm sure... <laughs> You would be expecting me to say that, oh, I grew up with Legos and play those. <laughs> As it is today, that. but no, that wasn't how it that was is those not times. the kind of childhood <laughs> I had at all. I grew up with um, playing Ampe and Pilolo and all those kind of things. I can relate. Yes. So that's the kind of childhood I had. But I had a very protective family. My dad was a teacher. He eventually became a lecturer. And he knew the essence of educating a child. Okay, he didn't care whether you're a woman or a man. All he, kn he, all he wants is you should excel, period. So my childhood, you're supposed to learn hard, be first in class. Okay. Sometimes if you're second or third, he's like... That's not good enough. No, you can't <laughs> be second or third. You have to be first. So growing up, all I knew was my books. I didn't really have much exposure. 
in terms of watching cartoons and all those things. It was just about, because of the environment you grew I up grew in. up in. Yes. I grew up in a village. Okay. I would say um, an estate in a village. Okay. So my parents, like I said, they were very protective. They really, really, really understood what educating a child is. So they gave us all their best when it comes to education. All yours is to apply. That's it. Just obey them that you're supposed to learn hard. Take your books serious. So I took my books serious. I was mo mostly first in class. in class. And then eventually, in fact, my dad put it in my head at the age of like nine that you have to go to Wesley Girls. From nine, you knew you were going to be in oh Wesley Girls? Oh, yes, of course. So it was all about Wesley Girls. Study, go to Wesley Girls, period. So that's exactly what I did. And there was I no did. way you were getting into Wesley Girls without the best of grades. Of course. So that's why you had of to really course, work hard. Of course. I remember, honestly, I think I should say this. You know, during my time, when I wrote my BEC exams, I was the best candidate in my district. Okay. And to date, nobody has been able to break that record. So wow. Yes, I want you to understand the kind of background that you had. I had. Okay, so that should tell you that, number one, you should take your books serious, but you should have parents who are ready to also support you. Okay, give you all, you, they could, it, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that they should be educated too, but at least they should be willing to give you, push you to the highest level you want to go to. So I went to Wesley Girls, and like every child, they, they think that once you're a good student, you should study science. Okay. So obviously, I chose science. I went to study science in Wesley Girls High School, and by the grace of God, I passed well. Then after that, you have to go to the university. And that was when the dream of my parents wanting me to be a, a doctor, I failed them. Okay. Okay. I failed. I, I, at that point, I felt like, okay, I've studied, I've passed. I gained admission to a uh, medical school in Legon, but that is not what I wanted to be. For me, I feel architecture is, has been a calling. So you've always loved buildings? That's why I said no, I didn't. Okay. I didn't. That's why I said I didn't grow up with Legos and all. I mm -hmm. didn't have any idea what architecture is. I didn't have any mentor, nothing. But just at the time I was going to the university, that is how, what I felt I should do, because I felt that was a good way to express myself, so to be myself. So what prompted you to begin to love buildings? You didn't grow up with buildings in mind. Yes. Was it because you had gotten exposed now and you, ha you had seen a lot of buildings, you've gotten into places, so you felt like, okay, I want to be behind you know, the building of these houses. Was that what prompted you? I was a smart girl first, but you know, architecture, is, it's, it's a creative art you're supposed to be creative. And being creative is a way you can express what is in you. Mm -hmm. So I felt that was the one way I could express what is in me. I could have been a doctor, been in my little corner. Or you could have even been a singer, that's creativity as well. <laughs> so of course, <laughs> I could have been, like, no, like my parents wanted me to be a doctor. A doctor. So I could have been a doctor. But that, that I felt that wasn't a way to express myself. Okay, mm. all the people who knew me from my child, those who know me from my child, would testify that I have evolved. I have really evolved okay. in a lot of ways. And it is, I, I, I know it's architecture that has made me this way. It has given me the ability to express myself and be the person I really have dreamt my, since my childhood of being, not just, I mean, it's, it's my way of touching a lot of lives. Okay, because okay. I'm just trying to touch it's on the creativity aspect. That's why I said you could have lives. been a singer as well, because if it's about creativity, what sparked that creativity around buildings? Because there's creativity in being a singer, there's creativity in being an artist, there's creativity in being a stage actress or even, you know, a movie actress. So what actually just moved I, you towards I, I, buildings? I, I used to imagine myself being on a project. Okay. where there are a lot, like a big project, a lot of men out there, and then probably I'm the only woman. Okay, <laughs> I was coming so to that. Yes, probably <laughs> I'm the only woman doing it. I, I like 
I mean, I look all cool and calm and collected, but I'm a very daring person. And you were looking at an very industry daring. or a, a, an aspect of life where we had a lot of men. And I will have my freedom to be me, okay, and not be in the bottle that my parents, the box that my parents wanted me to be in, to be myself, okay. So it was imagination. I, I, I imagine myself being on a big project where... I had to, I am the boss on the project. And you did not feel that the men were going to intimidate you? Oh, not at all. Honestly, I'm one of those who don't believe that um, what a man can do, a mm. woman can, can do better. No, I think we all complement each other. Okay. Okay, we all do. We all have, when it comes to architecture, even the men have their challenges. The men also have challenges. It's not only women who face challenges in architecture the only thing is you need to be outstanding that's it look forward to being an outstanding person in everything that you do once you are outstanding it doesn't matter whether you're a woman or you're a man when a client comes to you all he wants is results yes okay he wants a building period he doesn't care if you're a man or a woman just give me my building he pays you for that so that's exactly what you have to do. So as women, I think we shouldn't hide behind that cloud of um, I'm a woman. And so if I'm going for a job and a man, there's a man also equally competing with me, the man may probably get it. You, if you are competent enough to do it, you, would get, the you job. would get the job. So it's not about the man is better than me. So then, or you feel inferior. We have our challenges mm -hmm. when it comes to um, for me, my challenge was with childbirth. Okay. Okay, pregnancy and all that. Because at that moment, I wasn't doing architecture. I was doing being pregnant and having kids. Okay. okay. And that can be the little downside with a woman. But once you are over it, you, p you pick yourself up and move on and with you your move life. At the same pace. We or have the same brain as men. Okay? okay. We have the same brain as men. So. Be, 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 be excellent in whatever you are doing. That's it. Once you do it well, people will come. They don't care if you're a man or a woman. All right. So Give now results. that we've, we've delved into, you know, what you are doing right now, um, could you just let somebody who is watching us right now to actually understand who an architect is? Because, um, well, unfortunately, <laughs> not everyone uses the service of an architect. Mm -hmm. And I want to believe that this program is going to get people to understand the reason why they need an architect once they think about having their own building. Some will think that a draftsman can just do it. So why would I have to, you know, go through the extra, you know, extra, you know, having to pay for an architect? So could you let us know right now who an architect is and the reason why we need an architect to be able to have those beautiful houses that we've got? Thank you so much for this opportunity because I always put on my status, my WhatsApp status, telling my friends that they should use professionals when they are building, always use professionals. Because one thing is, people think if you involve an architect or a professional in your projects, you are adding costs to the project. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't come cheap. <laughs> no, I know, but, but look at it this way. Mm -hmm. If, I think people should not see it as an additional cost, rather see it as an additional value to okay. your projects okay if you think it would take you um, you would have to save let's say for five years before you'll be able to afford to build once you've saved if you you would need an additional let's say three months or four months to be able to afford a professional what is three months four months waiting okay to gather enough like to gather money to the pay resources a you need to, pay yes, to, to pay, pay to um, pay you know, a professional the right because once you put up the structure and then it fails because you probably didn't use a professional. You spend more money to Trying correct, to rectify yes, it. to correct whatever problem ha that had been, has been caused. So fa one, first of all, you say it saves you money. People don't know, but it saves you money. You should involve a professional <laughs> to save you money. I'm sh I have some mates from tech who didn't do architecture. But they come to me sometimes, oh, please, I need help here and there. If you have friends like that, you can talk to them. They can help you with a small fee. They can help you do your project the right way. 
instead of go, doing it anyhow, and then at the end of the day, you face a challenge. Just last week, mm -hmm. a client called me that um, um, he met me when I, had, when I was pregnant with my son. Okay. And he didn't, um, at the time, he felt pity for me for because you. I was heavily pregnant. So, so he couldn't he approach you? No, he didn't engage me. Oh. Okay. And then he used someone else. Now, he called me just last week that the project, the building has collapsed. That's so, sad. So can I come and then have a look at whatever? To start the work all over again. So do you think he saved money? He lost. Yes, he lost. Fine. His reason was that um, I was pregnant. And that's why I'm saying it's the brain. It's not our physical. If I'm pregnant, my brain is still working. So there's if he had approached you, you would have still been able to Exactly. Actually, there's been times you know, that I worked on my maternity bed. Like you are in the hospital about to give birth. You have a project pending. You need to send it to the client. You do it. So it's not supposed it's to be, you know, something that's going to hold us back. No, we should not see not it as something all. that will hold us back. I no. mean, we can still work even not as all. we are carrying pregnancies. No. Even though some people may have difficult pregnancies, but once you're healthy, you should be able to get the mm -hmm. job, mm -hmm. the job done. So, so how has it been so far with you having to work in a space dominated by men? <laughs> how has it been? Oh, it's fun. It is it's fun. Yes, it's fun. Very fun. So you're going to be telling people right now in the eyes that. It's fun to work in a space that is dominated well, by men. Well, for me, it's fun. Okay, it's so fun. it's I fun enjoy because... It. I enjoy <laughs> it because, um, like I said, you, I like to be in charge. Okay, I like to be in charge of every situation. And when you have men around you working, they pamper you all right, but I mean, that's okay. not about it. Okay, that, that's, that's good <laughs> news. They get to pamper you a little. That's, that's okay. not all about it, you know. The... Uh, you working, it's nothing for me. It's not they are human beings. I have brothers, I have friends who are men, so f it, it, I don't really see that they are men. So then, um, I should be intimidated. Or that's why I said it should be it's about results. If you are able to give results, that's it. It okay. doesn't matter whether you're a woman or a man. So now I'm coming back again to balancing motherhood and you know your, your career. You mentioned that there was this time you even had to work, you know on your maternity bed, yes. you had to get the job done. Mm -hmm. um, how has it also been, you know, aside that time, do you also have other stories that you could share about how you've been able to balance your career and <laughs> then um, your when, motherhood room? When, when I had my son, okay, then the, somebody commissioned me to do a work for him at the time I was pregnant with him. Okay. Then, in fact, I'm so grateful for that man to give me that chance. Because somebody else, like someone else rejected me to use my yeah, services, your services because, because of he felt yes. like okay, being pregnant so was going to deter his work. Yes. So my son, when I had him, about he was just about a week and a half, and my clients called me that they ha they want to start the project, and I needed to be there for the setting out. I need I needed to be there. I had to carry my son along with my mom. My mom waited in the car. I put my son in the car and then went on to do check whatever I had to check. That's it. There was a time I went to the site with my son alone and I had to go and check something. Like they had done the iron rods ready to cast a floor, the mm -hmm. first floor. Mm -hmm. So done all the arrangements, everything, waiting for me to come and inspect before they move on to the next phase. I had to climb up there with my son okay and it is not easy <laughs> <laughs> you know times like that you feel broken but i mean that's not the end of the world i mean it's a face it would it would pass so i sail through awesome mm -hmm. congratulations <laughs> it means that Thank a you. lot of resilience is needed if you're going to be a woman working in a space that is dominated by men so if that's what you're looking out to do, just be ready to be determined and resilient. We're going to be going for another break. And when we come back, we are going to be talking about how to actually identify a good architect. Because there are so many of them out there saying they are architects. So how do you know the right one to choose from? We're going to go for our break. And within that break, we're going to have our health tip. You really need to know or find out what it is we have to say to you about your health. Because this month is Health and Sanitation Month 
here in GMA. And we are saying to you that you should tune in every day as we give information on the best waste management practices on YFM, Happy FM, and ETV Ghana. We are going to be giving you health tips, diet tips, personal hygiene tips, and the latest updates on the coronavirus. We'll also bust some health myths and make you make the best decisions to ensure you live a healthy and uh, a clean life in a clean environment. If you would like to partner our Health and Sanitation Month on ETV Ghana, please call 0202222059 or 0244-942378. ETV Ghana, your world of quality entertainment. Let's go for that health tip. We'll be right back. My name is Saka Ejeni. I'd like to wish my mom, Mrs. Doreen Ejeni, a happy Mother's Day. All the women figures in my life, you've been wonderful, you've been amazing. Continue to be who you are, continue to be everything you believe in. Happy Mother's Day for me. Bye. Mothers, what would we be without you guys? Happy Mother's Day to my mom and all mothers in the world. Thank you for sticking with us through all the worst times. I mean, what would we be without you guys? God bless you. We appreciate you. Keep being amazing. Bye. Words really cannot express what we feel for you or how much we love you, or how much we care for you. All we want to tell you is that we cannot have asked for a perfect mother like you. God bless you. We pray that God will keep you with us for a very long, long time so that we can keep sucking your breast even though we are grown. We just want to say thank you for your care and your love. We wish you all the happiness that you deserve. Happy Mother's Day to you. We love you. Stop, stop. Stop, stop. Ma, thank you so much for all that you've done for our family. The love, the care, the sacrifices. In fact, we are blessed to have you as our mother. We don't know what we would have done without you. Thank you so much. May God continue to bless you. May he favor you and continue to strengthen you. Our Georgie number one, from Ashele, Ima, your grandchildren, and myself, we wish you a happy Mother's Day. God bless you, ma. Stop, stop. Stop, stop. Happy Mother's Day to you, Tembegam Kandla, my dear, dear mom. I want to wish a happy Mother's Day to all my aunties, Kralilen Lovu in South Africa, Nambule Lomazibubo in the UK, Dudus Videnyoni in Australia. I want to wish you all a fantastic happy Mother's Day and I wish the same for my colleagues at Global Media Alliance Group who are moms. And a special shout out to all women who support and watch ETV Ghana. I wish you a happy, happy Mother's Day. Um, you don't have to have given birth to your own child to be called mom, but as long as you've mothered somebody. I also want to wish a happy Mother's Day to all my cousins and my family and extended family. To my mother-in-law, your precious Mrs. Dorsinia, love you to bits. Um, and also a happy Mother's Day to all my friends. So a happy Mother's Day from me, Nosis Ado. Oh, wow. Amen and amen and amen to all those blessings and wishes that we've made to our mothers here in Ghana and even beyond. We want to say again that we love you so much. And remember that Vortec has been holding us down and has said we should keep ourselves hydrated with Vortec even within these times of COVID-19. 
Before we went on the break, we were going to ask our architect here how to identify that good architect whenever he or she approaches you. So, Gloria, we are back to you now. Thank how you. do we get to know who exactly is the right architect for us? Well, for our profession, mostly we get our jobs through referrals. Okay. Okay, yes. So, if you do a good, that's why I said you should always make sure you deliver excellently because if you get, do a good job for a client, then he refers you to another. Okay. And an architect shouldn't, well, an architect doesn't really only involve himself or herself with the aesthetics of a structure. You know, there's a study that says that we spend about 80% of our lives indoors. Okay. Okay, so you wouldn't want to create an indoor space where people who use it always curse you. Okay, so if you want to get that kind, that, that an architect should be able to listen to you, the client, and do what you want. Okay. Not, not, not just what you want professionally. Okay. He should be able to listen to your needs. I want A, B, C, D, and be able to interpret it and know that. So in that case, I need to give you A, B, C, D. Okay. You understand? I guess. So it. an architect shouldn't, it's not all about the aesthetics of the structure. We sh you should understand psychology of how people behave. And be able to give guidance and counsel. Exactly. So okay. if you speak to one, an architect and he, all he talks about or she talks about is the aesthetics of the building, well, uh, then I mean, you should be able to, to make our decisions. Yeah, there is more, more, far more to it than the aesthetics. Okay, something like, for instance, far maybe um, a couple that is getting retired mm -hmm. wants to, you know, put up put their up building, for yes. instance. So it means that this architect should be thinking around, you know, a lot of comfort. The materials so, and they use. cannot also be climbing staircases. No. So you shouldn't even be thinking of something Any for them levels, to climb. Flat. So it should all be very flat yes. levels. Such cancel is what you're yes. talking about. The type of um, material you use for your finish, the kind of tiles you use, mm -hmm. the lighting. Okay. Windows, you should have in enough windows, windows in your space. You can't have a... You know how it feels that when you get to a room and it's all small, tiny window somewhere, and you feel you don't feel all right. Okay, you don't. You don't it's not well ventilated. Yes, no, no, no good ventilation, no good lighting. Okay. Okay, so you should architecture goes. That's why I, I, I'm not so comfortable when people think all we do is draw lines. No, <laughs> it's okay. far more than that. All right, that. so. Uh, if it's not all about drawing lines, you've been involved in several projects that you were talking to us about and you even have some pictures mm. to even show around it. Could you highlight more in it, please? Of the, the projects I've done? Yes. Yes, so um, I like, um, um, you know, architecture, you can gear into different dimensions of it. You could be an interior designer. You could be um, a landscape architect. Okay. You could specialize in residentials. I love urban planning. I love community planning. Okay. So that means you can't I have one architect that's in, that has to do all of these things. You just mentioned right now that there's it one for landscape. It depends on the scale of the project. Okay. Okay, for a large scale of the project, there are different professionals that come in to make it all complete. But for a simple house, one person could one just person handle because that. Because we learn all of that in school. We learn about landscaping, we learn about interior decor, we learn about um, a lot of things community planning, neighborhood design. There's a whole lot that goes into design, especially that's why you need to consider people's psychological behavior. Okay. Even in your designs. Wow. Yes, because you control that. The architect has the magic to control that part of space, the interior space, how I want you to feel in your room, I can control that. Oh, wow. Yes. That's interesting. Yes. So, so with all, all these beautiful lines. things that you do for us outside, you know, uh, and, um, you know, give us very beautiful buildings and all of that, um, within this period, because we cannot deny the fact that we know that we don't live in normal times, have you had to work from home or did you, how have you been able to combine that, <laughs> working from home and being able to do all these beautiful things that all you're talking my, about? My architect's friends know that we can work anywhere. Okay. So for us, the only difference would be the fact that you may not be able to meet your clients, okay, because of the times, the we, times are we live in. in. But apart from not meeting your clients, you can get your work done anywhere 
on your maternity bed, you can have it then. Wherever you all you need is your, now thanks to technology, you have a lab. We, we use softwares that aids our design. So once you have your machine with you, you can work anywhere. So when it comes to architecture, honestly, the COVID, uh, it hasn't really affected me, except for site works and also clients' visits. That's it. But when it comes to design, it hasn't really affected me in any way. Okay, so with all this passion I see bursting inside of you, mm -hmm. have you really had to handle projects to, you know, help support any, any kind of charity? Because I see the way you're bursting with <laughs> so much passion and all of that. I, I, Are you I into something belong, like that? Yes, I belong to an NGO which we formed, I formed with my friends, okay, a few friends of mine, most of them are in Holy Child School, okay. and then from a few from Wesley Hills. So we came together when we finished SS, secondary school, to, we formed, we registered an NGO where we help the less privileged in the society. It's called Keta Tat Foundation. All right. So we make donations to less privileged people in the society, especially children or girls. Oh. Yes. We recently sponsored a young girl in the north. He, she passed her BEC very well, but she couldn't, her parents couldn't afford to pay her fees. So wow. that was, I think, two, she's almost completing now. So your NGO supported her? Yes. And we also, we've adopted an orphanage um, in, in Sawema Dwejiri. Okay. Yes. So every year, end of year, 31st of December, we go there, make donations, and that is the best feeling uh. of my <laughs> life. Okay. Which means that a lot of them are actually wishing you Happy Mother's Day in their hearts <laughs> right now because aside having Look your own children, young, young. see the you smiles on yes. their faces. Yes. You it's know, an they are also center. very happy. Orthopedic? So most of, yes, most of the kids are physically challenged. challenged. Yes. So. It's, it's a, a, look at them, a nice feeling we give to, I feel so fulfilled any time we go to this orphanage, <laughs> so fulfilled. Oh. And the woman in charge is so amazing. She's a white woman. She mm. takes care of them like her own kids. Oh, that's nice. But I can really see that you're really balancing motherhood and career. Yes. We, we, you don't have a choice. You, in fact, you don't have an excuse. Oh, nice. Done well, too. we are going to be opening the phone lines now so that you actually, you know, send in your message you know and uh, appreciate your mom if you didn't get the chance to be able to send in your video so just stay tuned and look out for our number and just call in and celebrate your mom if you want to contribute to the conversation as well around balancing your career and being a mother we are all for it just call us and let us know and that will be after our commercial break okay so um i'm coming back to you now mm. um i mentioned earlier that we don't live in normal times and I think we need to talk a bit about it. You've, worked, you've talked about how you have been able to work from home, even with the children, and still be able to meet up with your targets. Um, have there been some challenges? You know, I was discussing with some friend of mine, and she told me that her own challenge was the fact that her child got asthmatic within the period, and she was going around hospitals, and it looked like she couldn't get help because... Um, you know, asthma is not something that, you know, you could really deal with without having to check certain things. It has something to do with this respiratory, respiratory system, system. And this infection also has got something to do with the respiratory system. So it looked like the, the doctors the themselves were not really comfortable to actually touch the I child. And the she child. was watching her child struggle with the tightening of her chest and all of that. It took a miracle for her to be able to get, you know, the right person who attended to her child. So she said she's, not, she's never going to forget this COVID times because it was the toughest challenge she had to face. But today she's happy and her child is fine anyway. Oh, so that's the good news. So how has it been for you? Have you had any kind of challenge within this COVID times having to balance motherhood? In terms of and my with the kids. With your kids. Because for the as woman, for she had to work from home and this attack happened. So she had to leave her job and start looking for where to take her child and still had deadlines to meet. It was very hectic and not very easy for her. My kids are used to my lifestyle. Okay. <laughs> they are used to it because my daughter actually wants to be an architect. Something I thought I would, my, my child would never be, be, I mean, back in school, because of the kind of training we go through, mm -hmm. it is tough. It's really tough. Okay. But, you know, the training makes you also toughen up. Okay. To face the world. I think whatever training we go through in school, it's virtually the same thing we go through in real life. You need to be disciplined. You need to plan your time well. 
if you're an architect and you don't know how to plan your time, you can never meet your deadlines. The deadlines. Yes. So you need to plan your time well. Plan having them in mind because they are part of you. Okay? They are a part of you. Sometimes if you need to, I have gone to meetings with them several times. I go, sometimes when I tell them I'm going to the site, they can ask me which one. Okay. Yes, so they are used to <laughs> it. They are used to yes, it. Yes, they are used all to right. it. So plan, plan your schedule all the time from morning to leave. I know it may seem like I'm just sitting here just talking, but it's, it's possible. Okay. Okay, it is possible. In fact, we believe you because as you're here, you <laughs> seem really collected and have it all in place. <laughs> no, it's not easy. It's not easy. It's not easy at all. Sometimes you are torn into pieces like, geez, am I, how am I going to get out of this? But the thing is, it's about you and what you want. If you want to settle for anything, fine, that's you. But if you want to be excellent in all you do, you need to put in work. Okay, nobody should lie to you that you can dream and wish it and it happens. No, you need to work at it. All right. On that note, we're going to be going for a quick commercial break. When we come back, we will hear from you through our phone lines. Thank you. And you're welcome back. Um, Gloria, you mentioned before we went you know, on, the, on the break that um, you had an NGO. You've also mentioned to us that um, you, are some, you are a mother <laughs> who is also an architect. Well, what they don't know right now is that you also run a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole lot to be that, doing, you yes, know, in the yes. same one body and one person. It's, uh, how do you juggle that? Tell us about how you're running your restaurant. When I started the restaurant, there were several times I told myself, geez, why did you get yourself involved in this? That's why I'm saying I don't want it to look like it's easy. It mm -hmm. is not easy. Nobody should get it wrong that, oh, you can dream it and then you, it is tough, very difficult. When I started the restaurant, it was, I mean, my, my aim was, I live close to the Central University. So it was to help them. In they, they, they didn't have any proper food around. Okay. And for me, cooking is in my DNA. Kay. All my friends <laughs> back on campus ate from my plate. I mean, for someone who loves creativity, uh, creativity also could be found in food as well. So yes, I mean, I don't see how I far away it is from I it. I do not want to mention. I have friends who ate from my, from my place all the time <laughs> because they enjoyed my meal. So I decided, okay, why don't I turn it into a business? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's how it started. The, the passion I had for cooking and then I decided to, okay, I found a problem in the area that they didn't have any good food around. So then I set up the restaurants and it's been tough, but honestly, I found my level. So, so how is it doing? Now it's doing very well. Wow. Yes, it's, awesome. doing, it's doing very well. During the COVID, the initial stages was tough. Very okay. tough. When, when we had when to go on lockdown. When the students all had to leave. Yes, yes, it was tough trying to balance. I, I, there were so many times I contemplated on whether I should close it and wait for the president to call us back mm -hmm. before I moved on. But closing it wasn't an option for me. And it's still thriving, even within the, in the midst of the COVID. Yes, I think it's even doing quite okay, better. That it because was. Because I had to cut down my staff. Okay. Okay. To be able to. So meet. that means you put up a plan. Certainly. To put, I put up a, a very good plan, which is now working for me. Awesome. <laughs> I'm being told that the phone lines are jammed. People want to call in. Okay, so let's take it easy, okay, and see how we can get the calls through. Please yeah. take it easy. Okay, so please, the numbers again are 0555-657278. Okay, so try this number and get through to us. We want to hear from you. Awesome. So, okay, with the plan you put up, you were able to at least get yourself sorted and it's really working for yes, you. it's fine now. I'm very okay now. Well, that's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, congratulations. Somebody has been able to make it through. Hello? Hello. Yes. How are you? 
Um, I'm good. I'm good. Awesome. I'm good. Please, what's your name and where are you calling from? Um, I'm Charles. Okay, Charles. Calling yeah, from? Charles. Calling from Kaswa. Kaswa. Okay. Talk to um, us. Yeah, I just want to um, say uh, an advance happy birthday to my mom oh. and, to, and to all women. Okay. Yeah, uh, especially Baba. Okay, Baba. Baba, uh, a bunch of uh, stuff. Hey, he knows me. Okay. At least I'm just speaking. I'm just speaking. I'm just speaking. Okay. Uh -huh. Thank so, you so much. Yeah, keep it up. Keep it up, man. You are doing well. Nice to you, man. God bless you. Thank you. All right. Thank Bye. you so much. And say hello to people in Kaswa for us, okay? Thank you. <laughs> okay, so, um, you know, stepmothers are also, you know, people that have also contributed to how a child is shipped, you know, into society. Well, we've not had the best of them, and we also have them, some of them who are also good. What would you say around stepmothers who are impeding on the rights of the children of their spouses, you know, that they didn't have together? What, what would you have to say? Maybe give them some advice? Well, I think that if you love a man enough to settle with him, mm -hmm. okay, I do not see why you cannot make his child your own. I, I, I don't get it. Because I, I feel that kids, sometimes your own child can offend you in a way that is very painful. But as, as, as a stepmom, you should know that okay. your child is the same as... Please hold that thought. Okay. I hear another call is coming through. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hi. Hi. Okay. So please, what's your name and where are you calling from? My name is Ethel Sakodie and I'm calling from Lashibi. <laughs> oh, Lashibi. Nice. Yes. Uh, okay. So talk to us. Yes. So I've been listening to your conversation and I really admire Gloria, how, um, how she's been going about her her usual activities, that's taking care of the kids, and then Aww. being an architect. In Aww. fact, she has done a design for me. I've worked with her some time ago. Uh -huh. She did a design for me and my family, and I still so did. I, I mean, I still love You're still it. enjoying still, that design, huh? I'm still enjoying the design, the space, the kitchen, <laughs> the bedroom, the, the, screen, the windows, the ventilation. Even if it's hot, I don't even have to put on the AC, you know? It's awesome. early because she positioned it so well. So I just want to say thank you Aww. and happy Mother's Day to her. <laughs> and then happy Mother's Day to my mom and all the mothers in Ghana. Okay. Thank you so much thank for calling you, in. This is good <laughs> motivation. And say hi to everyone in Lashibi for us, okay? Thank you so much. <laughs> wow, thank you so much for putting that smile on her face because I could even feel the smile as she was talking to us. That's, that that's is to say that people should not look at whoever it is, maybe in terms of gender, who is providing them the architectural all, service. Because sometimes people feel that men should be better architects. So if they have a house issue or they have something they want to do around housing, they will prefer to go to a man because a man, you know, is fit for that kind of role. <laughs> but with her testimony, it's obvious that we can have women that can still, you know, play the same role and still be able to deliver the best of services. Result. That's it. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, so see, we have a very beautiful parcel here for you. Oh. <laughs> We have a very thank beautiful you. parcel here for you, and we want to say a very big thank you to you. Thank you. We are very, very happy to say that um, you have made women proud, thank and you. you've also been able to educate our audience about how to balance motherhood and career. So Voltic is saying thank you so, so much. Thank you. So um, we want you to keep doing what you're doing, and we'd like to hear more stories about the beautiful things you're doing in the lives of those children that your NGO has been helping. Thank you so, Thank so you. much. Thank okay. you for having me. Oh. I've really enjoyed myself. <laughs> <laughs> and we you. have also enjoyed ourselves Thank too. Thank you so much. Wow. You see, Baba? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank uh, you. We are missing you already, and I'm seeing a lot of shows. We are seeing people sending in so many messages and experiencing you. 
and they're saying that they are all happy to have heard so many thank things you. from you, okay? Thank you. So, Vortex says thank you so much and want you to enjoy your package, thank okay? Thank you for having me too. Thank you so much. So, this is my Vortex. I'm staying hydrated with Vortex. Are you staying hydrated with Vortex? If you are not yet staying hydrated with Vortex, make a decision today and move with Vortex wherever you are going. You need a partner when it comes to hydrating yourself in this times of COVID-19. And Vortex is your special partner. I have been costumed by Buretex Clothing and you can find her around Nyaho Clinic, the railway line. Just get to the railway and you'll find her just around the corner with a very big signboard saying Buretex. The beautiful thing about her is that she's going to give you a treat once you tell her that you heard about her services on the African Women's Voices Show. So do not miss that out because you get the chance to get some goodies from her and nice treats. So until we see you next week, we want to say enjoy the rest of our programs. And do remember that this is the Health and Sanitation Month in ETV, on YFM, and within the GMA group. And we are looking forward to receiving those packages and those partnerships through those phone lines that we mentioned to you. See you same time next week. We love you so much. And happy Mother's Day in advance to all our viewers and to all mothers. Bye-bye.